Greetings, knowledge seekers. For those in a hurry, it's true that Earth will capture a new moon soon. It will happen at the end of this month. It will be visible from Earth, but only if you have a very large telescope. This new moon is called 2024 PT5. It's tiny, it's a mini moon, and it won't be a mini moon forever. To be precise, it will be one from September 29th to November 25th of this year, 2024. But where does this mini moon come from? How is this possible? Or better yet, how is it possible that we only have one moon and such a large one when Pluto, which is a dwarf planet, has five? And is this a danger or an opportunity for Earth? To explain this, we need to address several topics, so let's get to it. What does it take to catch an asteroid and turn it into a moon? We need to have a gravitational field, and Earth, although not a giant planet, has a very respectable gravitational field. It's the largest of the four rocky planets. Thanks to it, we have our beloved moon, which is an enormous satellite compared to the rest. It's the fifth largest satellite in the entire solar system, surpassed only by Ganymede, Jupiter's satellite, Titan, Saturn's satellite, Callisto, and the volcanic Io, which are moons of Jupiter. Moreover, Earth has it gravitationally trapped at a quite significant distance, 384,400 kilometers, 238,855 miles. That's why when an asteroid passes close to Earth, its trajectory can be altered by Earth's gravity. For example, let's look at the case of Apophis. In the images of this graph, we have Earth fixed and the Sun at the center. We can see the drawing made by the orbits of Mars, Venus, Mercury, and making a bunch of loops the potentially dangerous asteroid Apophis. And according to astronomers' predictions, if there are no changes, Apophis will pass on Friday, April 13, 2029, at only 38,000 kilometers, 23,612 miles from Earth. And in that close pass, Earth's gravity will alter Apophis's orbit, completely breaking its pattern. As you can see in the graph, the asteroid's trajectory is modified by Earth's gravity. It doesn't mean it will inevitably end up falling towards Earth. It could receive a push and leave on another trajectory never to be seen again. Or it could shorten its orbit and we'd have it circling closer, or it could even be captured by Earth's gravity, albeit temporarily. Although this is not easy at all, planets close to the Sun have a hard time capturing moons. Why don't Mercury and Venus have moons, especially Venus, which has a mass only slightly smaller than Earth's? The reason is speed. To retain an asteroid, it's not only necessary for it to pass close by, but it must also pass at an appropriate speed. Near the Sun, all objects and planets have to move fast to avoid falling into the Sun's gravitational well. Conversely, the farther from the Sun, the slower objects move. That's why Pluto, although much smaller than our Moon, finds it easier to capture an asteroid that passes close to it and turn it into a Moon. Because in addition to the large Charon, it has four other Moons that we know of. Although this is not the only way to have a moon, we come to a big question. Why does Earth have such an enormous satellite? Well, because not all moons arise in the same way. What I've told you is the origin of captured moons, which were once asteroids, but there are two other options. Moons can arise during the formation of the planet, and other moons are created by collision events between planets, especially during the early times of solar system formation. Our moon arose from the impact of Earth with a Mars-sized planet, which scientists have called Theia. This planet was created at the same time as Earth, but in the same orbit. Two planets in the same orbit, that's something that can't end well. A small difference in speed between Earth and Theia would end up bringing them dangerously close, and in the end, a catastrophic collision would occur. Theia's core ended up sinking into Earth, contributing to our planet having a larger metallic core than would be normal, normal within the solar system, and other remains of Earth's crust and that of planet Theia were thrown into space, orbiting Earth to finally merge and create our moon. This is the explanation for why Earth has a moon that's normally large relative to the planet. This relationship is only surpassed in the solar system by Pluto and Charon, which astronomers consider to be a double dwarf planet system. The new mini-moon is called 2024 PT5. It's of the captured asteroid type, although it's suspected that it could be a fragment of our own moon, a fragment that was thrown into space after the Moon's collision with a large asteroid. 2024 PT-5 was discovered on August 7th and measures about 10 m 33 feet, in diameter. But the most interesting thing is that it's moving much slower than normal, and that's exactly what Earth needs to be able to catch it. 
Its relative speed with respect to Earth is only 1.03 km per second, or 3,700 km per hour, 0.64 miles per second, or 2,299 miles per hour. That's about six times less than the speed of typical asteroids in our environment. For example, the famous Apophis moves at about 7.4 km per second, or 26,640 km per hour, 4.6 miles per second, or 16,553 miles per hour. Note, relative speed with respect to Earth in close approach. This low speed will allow the small asteroid to be trapped in Earth's orbit between September 29th and November 25th. Afterward, it will make a turn and have its maximum approach to our planet on January 9th, 2025, at 1.8 million kilometers, 1.1 million miles. This discovery is thanks to two astronomers from the Complutense University of Madrid, brothers Carlos and Raúl de la Fuente Marcos. Having a mini-moon, even though we can't see it, sounds nice. It's like a puppy, something small, something cute. But let's think, having an asteroid circling close to Earth, even if it's small, is it good or bad? It's possible that this gravitational dance it has with our planet could end up making the asteroid impact Earth. The truth is, it's not good. For example, 2022 NX1 was a mini-moon of Earth in 1981 and in 2022 and it will be again in 2051. A temporary mini-moon. Depending on how its trajectory changes with all the shaking Earth's gravity is giving it, it could even collide with us starting from the year 2075. Luckily, 2022 NX1 is a tiny asteroid of about 15 m, 49 feet in diameter. In case of impacting Earth, its damage could be similar to the Chelyabinsk event in Russia, which occurred on February 15, 2013, causing more than 700 injuries and, according to the latest estimate, about $33 million in damages. Most of it was due to the shock wave that shattered almost all the windows in the city. Fortunately, this new mini-moon, the one that's news now, 2024 PT5, doesn't pose an impact risk at the moment. But to get more data and confirm the hypothesis that it could be a fragment of the moon, the two Spanish researcher brothers who discovered this asteroid will use the Gran Telescopio Canarias to do a more in-depth investigation. Lastly, mini-moons have something very positive. They represent an extraordinary opportunity to send low-cost missions to investigate them. To begin with, they don't move very fast, and, moreover, they come close to Earth so the spacecraft sent doesn't need to carry much fuel. This way, a mini-moon, that is, an asteroid, can be investigated much more economically. And the more we know about asteroids, the better we'll know how to combat them in case of risk, in case they are a real threat of impact with Earth. And in the future, we'll know more things to be able to take advantage of their resources. This topic of mini-moons is fascinating and shows us how much is left to discover in our solar system. The capture of 2024 PT5 gives us a unique opportunity to study these objects up close and learn more about the dynamics of celestial bodies near Earth. We will continue to be attentive to new discoveries and advances in this field of astronomy.